um, pen and wash today I've got a nice little cottage scene cottage garden and I've used a Faber-Cassell dark sepia drawing pen it's a permanent pen and I've done a very loose drawing of the door the window a little bit of the roof basically what I can see so I've kept that bit here that bit and that bit and I'll pop that photo up on the screen for you so it's all about quickness and looseness today so I'm going to come in first of all and get a little bit of a sky in I'll go through the colours as I go so that I've, I've got ultramarine today I've loaded my brush up with, with water first and I'm just coming in getting a nice summer's blue sky this paper today that I'm using is a cloud paper it's a clear fontaine cloud paper it's a little bit different it settles into cloud shapes you could use any paper We're going nice and quick and loose today. I'll rinse that off. I'm going to come into the building area. So I don't mind that it's going to blend a little bit. This is all going to add to the effect. So dip my brush into water and then I'm coming into the raw sienna. I'm wetting sections as I go, but I'm moving quite quickly, so I could wet the whole paper. But I'm just choosing to do these little sections at the minute. So this is raw sienna going in. I'm going to dab into some burnt sienna, brush still loaded. When you get those little blends into the sky when you're going nice and loose it just works really lovely so we're going to give an indication of something being there and something behind here as well so a little bit more raw sienna in there totally for a bit of variety i've got some raw umber here so I'm just going to dab a little bit of that in onto the raw sienna. Loosely dab. Through here. Now I want you to think about preserving your white. So when you're being quite loose you can very easily lose a white. And it's one time that I would say you can dab off. So I've just got a tiny bit of kitchen towel here. I'm just dabbing off those wooden porch bits really I want to try and keep those a little bit especially on the doorway okay so then I'm going to pop on some water around here I'm going to come in with some lemon yellow So brush is loaded up and we're going to start to get a little bit of colour on here. So just really to show you how loose you can go with watercolour. I'm going to do the same dabbing into the ultramarine and that's just going to start to mix on the paper. Horizontal strokes down on the grassy area but upward strokes on where all the cottage garden and flowers are okay so I need a couple of mixers now so I'm just going to take a little bit of water I'm going to take some ultramarine blue just a tiny bit of the ultramarine blue and a fair amount of the lemon yellow Okay, so I've got a nice mid green 
there's lots of different ways I'm going to show you now so the first one I'm going to show you is what they call throwing or splattering so you can see I'm tapping my hand with a loaded brush and I'm starting to create I want a bit to go up here as well texture you have to be careful of your walls you can also load a toothbrush up an old toothbrush and then if you hold it quite close to the paper use your thumb you can splatter that way too it's a really nice effect to build up so we're just building up some foliage if I take a little bit more blue into the mix And then the toothbrush again, building up, building up, building up. A few more splatters. You see I'm working quite quickly that's because I don't really want it to dry at this stage I want to get these on if I can nice and quickly I've got my rows and again we're going to splatter so a few splatters either side and then we can do a few toothbrush bits as well nice and random and my brush a really good rinse and I've got some Chinese white here so we're going to do the same again just be nice and loaded and splatter lots of wonderful things happening now so I'm going to dry that off now that's nicely dry I've got some really lovely loose texture happening so I'm just going to start to bring in a little bit more detail but not a lot so the first thing I'm going to do is to give a contrast to the roof and just wet this through a little bit I'm using in round number six now and I'm going to bring in a little bit more of the burnt sienna so this is about now just getting little areas a bit sharper and leaving a lot to the imagination so this is burnt sienna my brush is fairly loaded I'm just going to bring that in either side I'm going to touch into some ultramarine whilst I've still got the burnt sienna on my brush I'll just bring that a little bit darker that top edge you dab through a little bit to create a little bit of texture there I'm trying to contrast each of these sides so that that helps that stand out as lighter okay so with a dab of the ultramarine and a dab of the burnt sienna I'm going to make a nice dark grey then with that dark grey I'm going to go on to dry I'm going to pop some bits into the windows so I'm going to do this sort of shape which I like to call an upside down L 
You can do an odd one a little bit more, but this tends to work ever so well for windows. Once you've got that in, if you rinse your brush, dab it off, and then you're just going to just dampen the rest of the window. And that will work very good as a window. So let me do the ones on the door that are a bit darker. So these ones haven't got any light reflecting on them. So I'm going to come into pretty much all of it just with a dab. That will work nicely as a window. Under this edge, I'm just going to put a little bit of dark. Again, it's just going to help accentuate that light side of the wood. Just wet that underneath, around the door. Dab into the burnt sienna, and there's a little bit coming along there for like a window sill. And I'm going to run a little bit of the burnt sienna just down the edge of the door there, and just along at the top there. Dab back into the burnt sienna. I'm just looking for areas that are a little bit warmer. Pop a little bit in there. Let's soften that in. Okay, so that dark mix, that dab of ultramarine and dab of burnt sienna together. I'm just going to come just underneath this wooden bit as well, just to accentuate it. can't see much on this other side because it's covered with foliage so I'm just going to pop a little bit in there. I'm going to wet that bottom wet there. So it's just basically just touching and softening in. Now this chimney needs something a little bit extra on it. So if I go keep one side dark, one side light. I'll just take a little bit of the grey as well. Just gives it a light side and a dark side there. Okay, so I need a light blue door. So I'm going to dab into a little bit of the blue and a little bit of the white together. And then just paint the door in. quite a lot on my brush there. Just paint that door in. Leave a little bit of a, a white edge at the top. Now I've accidentally come over that bit so I'm just going to lift a little bit of that out just with a damp brush and I'll put that grey back in in a minute. So I'm just making sure I've got plenty of that grey again. And I can just put a bit of a panel in the door here. And then just rectify that grey bit back in there. If I grab some of this mid-green and I'm just going to sweep a couple of lines across the lawn. So I'm still using my round number six. And now I'm going to add some more foliage. I'm just going to, before I do that, use this bit of green. Just to create some grasses. Just in this foreground section. So I'm just stroking upwards with my round number six. Just going to make a little bit more of that green. So that was the lemon yellow and the ultramarine blue. 
So it's just going to give it an extra bit of depth. Lots of different heights. So going back to my round number 10 now, still need a little bit more of that green. Okay, so I'm going to throw or splatter again now, but I'm splattering this time onto dry. There's a nifty trick I'm going to show you in a second to blend some of this in. So we're throwing this on. Remember that we need to come around the house area as well. Do a bit with the toothbrush. This is again the closer you get, the more controlled you are with the toothbrush. So you can then get quite close. Then I'm going to come into the rose again. And do the same thing, touching my hand. Keep those splatters low this time, that side. Then I'm going to do the same, do a really good rinse with the Chinese white. So I've got quite a lot down here. Here. I'm going to pick up a bit with the toothbrush and just splatter that in as well. Okay, so what you can use is a spritzer if you want any of these bits to blend. So further up, you might want them to blend within the sky area. So we can just spritz them and watch them blend. Spritz a little bit, spritz a lot and it will blend loads. So it's up to you how much you spritz. picking up my round number six and I'm dabbing into the ultramarine blue I'm just going to throw a bit of that into the spritzed area as well so I'm just thinking about this blend across the house really I want that to blend a little bit more if you get odd bits in the sky that you don't want just dab them out they can become a tree. You can cover your sky up if you if you're doing a specific area. This we're keeping quite loose anyway. Okay, so I'll dry that off. Okay, so I'm nearly done now. I just need a little bit more shadow just within here. So this is the raw umber on my round number six. I'm just taking a bit of shadow in on this bottom edge. Just bring this up a little bit. A little bit of shadow here. Just 
and the shadow seems to just make a picture so I'm just popping a few bits on raw umber is a nice easy colour to use if you can break up this edge a little bit it just breaks into the foliage as well and gives you a little bit more definition there then with a damp brush I just want you to soften in that edge so not all of the shadow is soft but I want that bottom edge to be quite soft you can take in a little bit of your burnt sienna and ultramarine mix as well that's nice and dark just on that very bottom edge Give it a real good bit of oomph. Be a tiny bit up there as well. We'll have a little bit on there for a doorstep. Sort of finishes off that, that feel of the cottage and then you've got the shadow on the lawn already. Okay, so I'm just going to show you a bonus tip now. You can get into this. For doing a little bit of texture so I've got bubbles I'll show you the palette in a second so I'm popping those bubbles into paint so I'm using the green paint and then we're going to apply those bubbles to the paper just in areas you can do lots of this you can do a little bit of this it's all about creating some different texture so I'm putting these bubbles down on the grass area and then the key is to do it and then leave them to dry I'm going to do a little bit as well in the rows I find the easiest way to pick it up is with my finger so this is just standard bubble mix kids bubble mix you could I think use washing up liquid as well and just shake it up really well so I've done a little bit here with some rows I'm just creating some shapes of flowers really on either side so I'm just going to leave that to dry and then you'll be able to see the texture appear okay so that's pretty much dry now you do have to leave that to dry naturally as the bubbles pop you get a really nice texture I'm just trying to bring this closer so you can see so I added a few more with the darker green mix so that you would see those nice and clearly so it's a really nice textured effect so there you go that's a loose pen and wash cottage garden